Welcome to Electron Online. In the previous video, we saw the reason why there was a UTC time and a GPS time and why they would change or differ from one another and the difference would continue to increase due to the slowdown of the rotation of the Earth. But it's not always like it seems. So let's look at a little bit more of a detail here. So we know that GPS time moves ahead of UTC time. And why is that? Well, since the Earth's rotation slows down, a day will take longer and GPS time is not adjusted for it, so GPS time keeps going to the old traditional 24-hour day, while the UTC time keeps track of the slower 24-hour day, 24 hours and a few seconds, so to speak. Well, not really a few seconds, 24 hours and a, and a fraction of a second, but over time those two will diverge and UTC will be, uh, GPS will be ahead of UTC. So the difference between the two, GPS minus UTC, will be a number of seconds. Well, starting on January 1st, 1980, things were set so that the GPS time was equal to the UTC time. But then about a year and a half later, on July 1st, 1981, they added a leap second to the UTC time, so now GPS was ahead of UTC by one second. This kept going, and by the time we hit January 2017, another leap second was added, and now the difference between GPS and UTC time ended up being 18 seconds. That's because one leap second was added about once every one and a half years or so. However, since January 2017, no leap seconds have been added. The reason is the Earth's slowdown has diminished to the point where a whole second is not added in the difference between the UTC time and the GPS time, so no leap seconds need to be added. Earth rotating faster than expected. Well, we expected the slowdown to continue, but for some reason it hasn't. And that is why we cannot count on the predictability of the Earth's rotation. It turns out that currently, and you can see that it's not steady in any means of the imagination, we can currently say that the change in time per day is about two one thousandth of a second. That's due to the slowdown of the Earth's rotation. We expect that 100 years from now that will increase about four one thousandth of a second. But you know that it's not going to be a smooth increase. We know that it's going to increase, well, kind of in a, a pattern that we can't really predict. But based upon what we've seen, it does appear that the slowdown of the Earth is accelerating. In other words, the difference between GPS and UTC time will be larger every year, 100 years from now, than it is today. But you can see that it's not a smooth change. That sometimes the Earth moves a little faster, sometimes it moves a little slower for various reasons. I guess the gravitational forces between all the planets and between the Earth and the Moon and the Earth and all the other planets, I should say, well, it's not a predictable thing. And because of that, you can see that things do change in kind of a, a random fashion, in some sense, but we do know that the overall trend will be such that the GPS time and UTC time will continue to diverge. So it is this number right here that is now communicating via the navigation message from the satellites to the receivers, so they, because the receivers can set themselves to the UTC time, and they need to know that GPS time is different from the UTC time by 18 seconds, and when another leap second is added sometime in the future, that number will then become 19, and then eventually 20, 21, and so forth. So instead of adjusting the clocks on the satellites each time we do a leap second, we simply account for the time difference and add it to our calculations. That's a lot cheaper and easier and less damaging to the clocks and the satellites, and therefore that's the methodology we use, and that is how it's done.